this is Scott L. Miller, and on Sam IT today, we're going to talk about why we want to hire passionate IT professionals. So, I've had a lot of discussions around this in the last couple of weeks, and there are two really clear camps. There's one camp of people that are really interested in hiring incredibly passionate IT people. And there's another camp that seems to not just be uninterested in passionate people, but may actively be offended or take some degree of offense to the concept that passionate people might be important or good or desirable. Now, we may see that in people reacting to, like, not wanting to bring their work home or not wanting to see people do anything outside of the job or not wanting to see people learn on their own or simply not wanting to look for passion but rather simply experience or training or something to that, to that nature. When we talk about passion, it's a passionate subject, and I think that that's natural. But I want to talk about why it's important both to employers and to employees, because a lot of times dispassionate people in their career fields will argue that passion is a negative in a job, and I don't believe that's true. I think that that's crazy, in fact, but a lot of people believe it, and it's worth noting that this is a commonly held belief, one that people argue vehemently about uh, and will get quite upset if you don't agree with them partially because if you don't agree with them, it implies a lot of things that are kind of important to realize. So, first of all, why passion as an employer? If you're hiring people, you want to make sure that they are passionate because passionate people do better at learning, they do better at there's someone running in and out of the room. They're uh, better at learning. They're more likely to um, work hard, to be productive, to stay with the job long term. They require less training. They require less motivation and management, less micromanagement. Um, there are huge benefits, both short term and long term. Passionate people are the one you may be able to keep for a lifetime, or at least a long period of time, whereas dispassionate people, chances are they may stay but be unhappy, but more likely they're going to move on. They're more likely to jump to a different career because the one they're in doesn't do anything for them, and they may be in it just because it's what paid the bills. So from an employer standpoint, passionate people are also happy people. The two don't necessarily go together, but they tend to. If you hate what you do for work, chances are you're not going to be very happy because work is a huge part of your life. You want your people to be happy. Just because you're passionate about your job doesn't mean you will be happy. You may have all kinds of personal things going on that make you not happy and your job can't fix that. And you as an employer may do a terrible job. You may provide terrible management, terrible job goals, terrible pay, terrible uh, benefits. You may have the work just may be boring. So it's partially on you to make the job great. It's partially on the employee to make sure their personal life is great, not that they have control over that necessarily. But beyond those two things, it is also necessary that you match your employees with their passion to being something you can provide in that job role. If you do all those things, you have the best possible chance to have people who are happy and are going to strive to do well in their jobs, not just because they like you as an employer, but because they like what they're doing. They're not uh, at odds. Otherwise, you may be the best employer in the world, but if you have people who hate the job that they do, they may stay with you. They may like you as an employer. They may want to do a great job, but that lack of passion makes it that much harder for them, and at best, they're going to be fighting their own interest in order to align with your interest, which means that their personal life will be less happy, even though they may like the job. They may want to stay with you, but it, it's not the ideal situation. If we flip that, now this is where everyone pretty much understands why employers want passionate people. It just makes sense. But if you're dispassionate, you may view this as greedy that you only want to hire people who are going to do a good job, well, that's not fair. I'm not going to do a good job, or I don't want to do a good job, or that I do a good job requires a lot of work. I'm not passionate about it. Why do you care about that? Right? There's a lot of emotional reactions that are unfair, I think, to employers wanting to get people who are well fit for the job. But let's flip that. If you're looking at an employee, why do you want to be passionate about the job that you do? This seems strange, but I come from a world where people are passionate about their jobs. But when you talk to the average person, the average person in the average field hates their job. They hate going to work. They hate what they do. They hate that they had to learn it. They hate that it's something that takes away from their personal lives. That's awful. That means that you have people who spend a huge portion of their lives, between one quarter and one third of their entire waking pre uh, retirement lives doing something that makes them fundamentally unhappy. It may not be that they 
actually hate it, but they don't love it. And life is too short not to love what you do a quarter to a third of the time. I mean, you have to be at least as good as sleeping, right? Which you also do a third to a quarter of the time. If you, so this is one of the biggest shifts that you can make in your life. You have to sleep a certain amount. You have to work a certain amount for most people. And then you have your personal time beyond that. And you can divide these roughly into third, third, and third. They're not exactly, but they're pretty close. And if you have one third of your entire life, and it'd be one half of your waking life, that isn't something that makes you happy, that is an unbelievable impact. And an employer who cared about you would want you to be doing something that makes you happy during that time. That's not greed. It may also align with their benefits, but it's aligning with you. It's doing the thing that's good for you. It's kind of like saying doctors would be greedy if they saved lives. Well, they might have some greed involved in saving lives, but it's in your interest to have your life saved. So you don't normally get angry with a doctor for doing good medicine, and you shouldn't get angry with an employer for looking out for your interests, even if those interests happen to also be good for them. But that's what a good employment relationship looks like. You want the employer and the employee to have shared goals, mutual benefit. Everyone should be happy. That's all the employer is looking for, and it's what the employee should be looking for, too. Because as an employee, it is of your utmost concern, one, to put food on the table, but two, to make sure that you're doing so in a way that makes you happy, because that's what's going to give you a good life. And when you are happy with your career, you are most likely to excel in it. This is just how life is. The happier you are, the more passionate you are about your career, the more likely you are to be happy putting effort into it, work harder. And by work harder, I mean get more done, not actually feel like you're working harder. When you love your job, there's no such thing as working hard because you love your job. It's fun. It's like a hobby. It may not be your number one priority, which might be spending time with your wife or kids or husband or, you know, family. Uh, or vacationing. Maybe you really are passionate about travel and that's more important. And that's fine. It doesn't have to be your highest priority, but it does need to be something that you enjoy and like getting to do. So when you go to work or get your work done, you should feel accomplishment and happiness. And when you're looking uh, to go to work the next day, it shouldn't be with dread or trepidation. It should be with, to some degree, excitement. Maybe not as much excitement as would make you voluntarily leave your family behind every day, but at least enough excitement that there is something to look forward to, uh, to go to. Just like you wouldn't necessarily look forward to going on vacation if you left your family behind. That's just how things are. So passion is important for everyone not just because it makes you happy, but because it also gives you the best chance at excelling at your career. Like uh, the famous quote says, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's what both employers and employees should be working towards. It is in both of their interests to make employees as happy with their lives and their careers as possible. Everybody wins. The problem is, is that there are a large number of people, a large percentage of people, who either are not passionate about what they are doing currently or are not passionate about anything, and this becomes a challenge because those people probably should get work too. That's the theory. Everyone should have a job. So people need to employ them as well, but they don't necessarily need to be employed in IT. There are lots of fields out there that have a lack of people who are passionate about them and could probably use anyone who's dispassionate about any particular field just as equally well as anyone else. IT is specifically a field that, one, highly rewards people who are passionate because it's an incredibly detailed and complex field that needs a lot of personal commitment over a lifetime. It's not something you can learn when you're young and then just ride it out. Uh, and also because it has a large number of people who are incredibly passionate about it, who are out there trying to get into those job positions. So having people who don't enjoy IT taking those jobs really hurts everyone. It hurts the employers because they're working hard to filter out who's passionate and who's not. And it hurts the people who are passionate because it's harder for them to get into the positions that they want, which are filled by people who don't want them. Now, that doesn't mean that there's a magic answer and that all those people should just give up their jobs and magically get a different one. 
that's an individual problem where it would be nice if something of equal or greater passion for those people existed already and they could just move into it. Life isn't that simple, so there's no easy answer. The important thing here is that, one, I recommend that you reevaluate your life if you are doing a job you are not passionate about, and two, as an employer, you should be looking for passion probably more than anything else in what you do to hire, especially when it's in IT. I would apply this broadly, but there are some jobs where passion simply doesn't come into play very often, such as factory floor workers uh, or cashiers or things like that. There's a lot of uh, unskilled and semi-skilled work where passion simply doesn't come into play, and that's where people without passion tend to end up in the majority. But when you're hiring for positions, especially ones in the C-suite, senior management, IT, and such, where having drive and the dynamic uh, range between the lower end people and the higher end people is so unbelievably large, passion matters more than anything. And this is what you should be looking for, not skill sets, not aptitude, not experience, passion trumps almost everything. Of course, you still need skill, you still need aptitude, you don't need experience. That can be completely provided by an employer or fixed over time. Aptitude and skills, not so much. Skills to some degree, certainly, aptitude almost none, and passion zero. Passion is the one thing that no one can influence, right? If you don't hire people who are passionate about what they're going to do, you're out of luck. You're not going to get them. That doesn't change. Their aptitude will almost not change, but it can be influenced. Their skill sets can be heavily influenced, but not controlled. And then finally, their experience can be completely controlled. So looking at those things, it's odd that we tend to hire for experience, which matters the least. And we almost never hire for passion, which matters the most. So the takeaway, focus on passion and aptitude consider skills and experience, it's worth looking at, but only after all those other things have been evaluated. Unless you're hiring temporary workers who are only there for less than, say, six to nine months, then experience counts much more than the other things um, in most cases. But for permanent workers, for people who are becoming part of your team, you want all those other things more than anything else. Thanks for joining me. Remember, comments below. There's a lot to discuss. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to sponsor us here at SamIT, you can do so on Patreon.